let me show you how to install one of the greatest gaming Windows installs ever. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Chamber here, and today I will be showing you a step by step guide on installing Chamber OS, my custom gaming OS. Now, these are set up to give you the most optimal gaming experience, being able to easily install a Windows install with everything you already need set up the way. You want it and then start playing games just to kind of go over it and also show everyone else that this os is an option i'm gonna show you how to install it there will be two options that you can install both are the exact same you can follow this video for either one there's a windows 10 that is stripped of all the bloatware then a windows 11 that basically has everything just left on i will be installing the windows 11 today because that is what i expect most people to be using these os's are perfect whether you're getting a brand new gaming pc or you are actually just wanting to reinstall your Windows on your current PC. So let's get right into it. To get access to my custom OS, you will actually need to join my Discord. Link will be down below. When you scroll down, go all the way to the bottom of the text channels and you will find Chamber OS. In here, you will find the links to install them as well as the passwords for them, as you can see here. Now, while you're here, if you decide to join the community and you also want to support me, you can get access to my special to my limited paywall access of the discord so what this means is you get access to custom channels early access to my benchmarks discounts on my fps service to get you more fps so now let's install the os here i have on my desktop both of the os's i have installed i have decided to be going with windows 11 here you will need a usb thumb drive just to install this OS, make sure you plug it into your PC. We'll also be using Rufus to actually get the OS on your thumb drive, but I'm gonna be using Windows 11 here. So make sure that you do install 7-Zip as well. Once you get to the OS you've decided, right click, once you've installed 7-Zip, hit extract to and enter the password. So I'm going to type in the password here and there you go. Now we can get actually in to the OS and here is the file, where's the ISO. Now that we've extracted all the files, here we have Rufus, so you're gonna wanna open it, hit run. Then you're gonna find your USB device. So here I have my USB. It's just a random USB I have already plugged into the PC. You wanna hit select, hit wherever you have the OS installed or the ISO. I'm gonna click this and choose standard Windows, hit GPT, then hit start. Now. You can do all this stuff. This does actually not matter here because it is already done for you in the OS. So I'd actually recommend unchecking these. Hit OK. And then if you hit OK, this will remove everything that's already on the OS on the USB stick. But I'm not going to because I actually do need this USB stick for some other things. So and I'm not going to be installing with it. So I'm just going to hit cancel, but hit OK. Wait for it to fully move. Hit 100%. If it gets stuck at like 97.2% for a while, let it sit for a while, then close out. You should be able to install the OS just fine. Here I've got my Windows install already set up on my drive. Now you will be need to actually go to your motherboard's BIOS. So to hit that, you're going to click it, hit, hit the power button, hit restart, then spam the delete or F2 key, whichever one it might be. Typically it's delete though. Just hit and then you're gonna to need to go to your boot options. So let me show you how to do that now. Here I am in my motherboard's BIOS. Now, every BIOS will look a little different. You might need to hit like F7, F2 to go to an advanced mode, but you typically don't. Then you wanna to go to the boot tab here. So boot option one will be, you only need to switch it to your USB key like this. You can say one, two, boot manager. Um, for me, I do need to do a little bit something different and do, or you can also just click boot override and select it. One second, let me do this. Hit UEFI OS and then decide that this is the option I want. Now I'll hit save changes and reset. Hit yes. Now this will actually go into rebooting into the Windows install the USB stick. So let me wait until that actually does happen. All right, here we have the OS here. Now, what you want to make sure is that you pick and make sure that you install Windows on the correct drive. So mine will be on drive zero. I'm actually going to delete every partition that is already set up, such so as get a clean bootloader here. Something I would recommend actually. Make sure you don't delete any of like your other drives. So like this is my two terabyte, which has all my games on it, and then my actual OS. So make sure I don't delete this one. Then I'm just gonna hit next. Now what's gonna happen is you're gonna wait for all of these files to 
um, install, just copy over, move over to your drive. After this, you will restart the PC and then we'll actually be able to go into Windows. So let's wait for this to finish. Here is the thing, it just restarted. So now what you're actually gonna to need to do is unplug that USB stick. This will bring you back into the actual Windows setup and then you'll actually be put onto your desktop in just a little bit. So as we can see, the PC is now restarting and then we'll be actually thrown into Windows itself. Typically does take a couple of minutes just to set everything up fully, but after that, you're all good. So as you can see, you do get the little circle right here for Windows 11. Give it some time. It might restart once or twice. Then you will get part put right into your desktop. Here we are back in Windows now. So as you can see, give it a little time. It does actually switch over to dark mode here. Now we're just going to hit post. You, need, you can ignore the NADesk. Install Brave. This is the OS. This is the browser that I prefer to use. And this one that I've decided just to throw an install on for people. Open up Windows key. Make sure you have a Windows key. If you just purchase a Windows key, get rid of that weird, ugly activation in the bottom right corner. And we're going to install 7-Zip. This is just my preferred way of just extracting things. Hit accept on DirectX. Hit C++, install the C++ packages. Then go to whatever drivers you have, AMD, NVIDIA. If you have Intel, I don't have the link installed. Just go to Brave and do Intel drivers. Um, while we're at it, oh, I meant to set that, but just hit finish. Okay, back to here. I'm going to use NV Clean install to install my NVIDIA drivers. That's what I'd recommend. Just hit manually select, do the latest desktop, next, minimum, next. Then just install all the drivers here. The reason I like to do this for NVIDIA, it just easily gets rid of all the bloatware without having any weird issues. And I'll show you which ones to actually press. Also, I have a more in-depth video on NVIDIA stuff. If you want to check it out, link's in the top right right now. For all the NVIDIA settings. But that goes a little bit more in-depth. I also have an overclocking guide. But just wait for this to actually finish. Okay. So here's what I'm going to press. Disable, use unattended, perform a clean, hard, clean installation. And then for these, I like to skip all these except enable, um, message signal interrupts. This is just MSI mode if you know what that is. I also like to disable HTCP. This might cause some issues. For example, on Brave and Netflix, it does not work. So maybe you don't want to enable that, but these are the ones I would recommend. Just now, if you do use the HD audio driver, keep this, you can check this one, but I'm not going to. So what I'm going to check, hit next, and then hit install. Then it will install your NVIDIA driver. So I'll be back once that installs. Once the NVIDIA installer is done, all you need to do is just close out of this window. Now for my NVIDIA users, just click NVCP settings, hit OK. This will automatically apply your NVIDIA control panel settings. The only thing you will have to do actually in here is, I'm going to hit accept. I don't know why it's so small. OK, you're going to want to hit this. Go to the top setting move it to the middle, and then you're gonna want to hit apply. I'll be right back. Let's set up the monitor so it, it actually shows up on my main monitor. Okay, so to continue this, for my AMD users, make sure you just check out my AMD guide linked up in the top right. You can find that. Go to all of the AMD drivers, make sure that they're all good. But now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna continue. So I do have MSI Afterburner and River Tuner Statistics Server. This is the latest version I have checked. And what you can do is just set up your overclock. So I have my 4090 here. Let's do that real quick. 135 plus 1750. Max out power limit, save, and then boom, perfect. It's all good to go. So that's really quick. It's also, if you want to set like an FPS cap here, you can do that. So 390, set up. I'm just going to do this real quick just because this is what I always do. And enable frame rate limiter is already enabled. Perfect. Now drivers, this is not needed anymore, but if you have any of the Intel drivers, I do have a specialized i210 driver, by the way, in case you're interested, we can do that. Now, if you want to disable any devices, typically what I do in here though, is I just go to my ethernet adapter, turn off power, advanced energy efficient, disabled, flow control, disabled, interrupt moderation rate, set this to low, it's a little better. And then that's all you really need to do in device manager. If you want to do anything too, you can set your sound. I just need to disable this. And I hate monitor sound and then make sure that like all the enhancements are disabled if you do that 
or if you want like loudness equalization, do whatever you want in here. Make sure that your audio formats are maxed out like, let's see, which one actually allows me to max it out? There, no, none of them. Never mind them. You can do whatever you want in here, MSI mode. So what I like to do is just no, check your issue audio, but set all of the interrupt priorities to undefined. This performs the best in my testing. Now, super simple. You just got to install your games. If you want to install Azrock timing or Zen timings for your motherboard to check RAM overclocks, if you want to do that, you also set up VLC. But now let's check out some apps. So as you can see, we have IDA64, CPU-Z, DDU. We actually have Chrome in here, GPU-Z, HW-Info, IMLC. So a bunch of good testing tools. So if you are a overclocker, you can test your stability, make sure everything is all good from this OS. This is an OS made for gamers as well as overclockers too. It's a very well all round OS. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit that like button down below. Let me know which OS you installed. Did you install Windows 10 or did you install Windows 11? But see you guys in the next one. Peace.